Welcome guys to another session on dynamic programming. The problem today is DBV 6.13, a game of cards. So with that, let's look at the problem statement. The problem statement is that a dealer produces a sequence of cards, S1, S2, Sn, and then there are two players who have to pick these cards. Now each card has a value VI. So when you start with the first player, the player has two options, either pick the first card or the last card. That's the only options in front of you. And each player goes in sequence till we have all the cards that we can get. Now, you can obviously see the first and the last cards, but you cannot, um, I guess, pick any other card. So you have it and the card values are visible to you. So you can you have a choice there to make. We have to com uh, come up with an order n squared strategy so that the player one um, has the highest gain in this situation. So the solution for this problem is, let's just say there is a function called pij that calculates the gain um, from the first to the last move in favor of the uh, first player or the whoever's playing the first move. This function gives you the lead um, in terms of points that the person will have. So let's call that PIJ. And we already given the sequence SI to SJ that the dealer has dealt the cards right in front of you. So that and the values of each cards is known ahead in time. Now it's only a question of us making moves in that um, given deck. So with that, I'll, I'll present an example so that you can understand the solution that, that will come next. So let's say that the cards are lay, laid out S0, S1, S2, S3, and the values are V0, V1, V2, V3. And let's say the choices turned out to be where the first one picked V0, the second one picked V1, the first player again picked V2, and the last player finally picked V3. So the gain in this case would be V0 minus V1 plus V2 minus V3. But if you take a look at how the function will compute it, the way the function computes it is that when you take P03, the first player makes a move P0. But when the second player makes a move, this function, if it's, if it's computing P13, it's going to compute V1 minus V2 plus V3 because it's from the perspective of the second player. So that's why what we end up doing is that when we say P03, it's equal to V0 minus P1, 3. It's not plus, it's minus because the, the uh, perspective changes when it goes to 1, 3, uh, then it's from the perspective of the second player. The gain becomes the, from the perspective of second player. So you can look at this um, and maybe try it out um, on, a, on a, another example till you get this point because this is the core point of the solution is that um, when you compute P03 from the perspective of the first player, P13 becomes the perspective of the second player and try it out with a very simple example like the one I presented here where I just took V0, V1, V2, V3 and it makes perfect sense why this equation works this way. Now having having understood this, let's move on to the next solution which is where the whole solution uh, and the recursion comes into uh, uh, focus. So again, let's say the equation, the sequence is SI to SJ. PIJ is our uh, function that gives us the gain of the first player over the second player. And for the ith move, we need max of two cases. First of all, either you could use the, choose the ith one or the jth one, which is the either the beginning or the end one. Whenever a choice happens, there's only two valid choices. So like in the previous slide, what we do is if we choose the ith um, on the first move, then, then the total value becomes vi minus pi plus one j. And if you choose the jth, then it becomes, actually, I should make this a j. So it becomes Vj minus Pi j minus 1 because the jth has been taken. So so this becomes, and you have to choose the max of these two equations. Okay. So um, let's uh, look at the matrix form of this. Uh, very simply, we have done i and j in the matrix form and they go from 0 to 3. There's four possible cards here. So uh, one thing to see is that you know, the lower half of this matrix has no meaning because you cannot go from one to zero, right? And from two to one, those don't make any sense. Um, you can only go from uh, a card um, 
that was dealt uh, forward. You cannot, you, you're not going backwards, right? So if you look at a sequence of cards, uh, all the valid sequences will lie in this upper matrix. Now, having said that, along this diagonal, uh, if you have zero, zero, what is the gain that the first player will have be zero? Now it's an invalid choice, but because you know the, the other player should get a choice, but from the sake of the problem, uh, it is considered a valid move and V0 is the outcome. And likewise, when you have one to one, it's V1, two to two is V2 and so on. But when you get to zero to one, when you say P01, P01 has two options like we said earlier. Either it's gonna be V0 minus P11 or it's V1 minus P00. Both of those two problems are already computed because the diagonals are all computed at this point, the main diagonal is computed. So it's easy to compute this value and so on because every time you get to this one, uh, the previous values are available to you. And so when you move towards the higher diagonals, eventually to this um, zero to three, which is your solution, you will see that the pre previous values are pre-computed and available to you as a matrix. And all you have to do is plug in these two options, compute the max and store it. And that's how the problem would lead to an answer right here in this final square on the top. So that's it guys uh, for this problem. It was a fairly simple problem um, and uh, sort of a, uh, you know, a very simple application. And you can see that the order is n squared because it is clearly um, order one computation to do this math here for each square because it, it this math is <clears throat> like the problem says it's order one and therefore the overall problem can be sorted in order n squared. And once again, thank you for watching uh, the dynamic programming series with me. And um, uh, please leave me comments if you have any. Otherwise, uh, if you like the video, hit the like or subscribe button and keep watching and stay tuned to dynamic programming as we reach almost the half of the problem uh, problems that are available in DPV. And uh, I hope to get uh, to the end of that um, problem set very soon. Thanks for watching and until next time, bye-bye.